Why does this hallway give me the impression that each of these doorways will lead to a different ironic punishment of an afterlife? Hello everyone, and welcome back once again to Gary's Mod. And today, I wanted to take the time to explore a few maps that, in one way or another, are just plain weird. Because what else is the source engine but the means for any nutjob on the internet to create 3D worlds for us all to explore. I've kind of made a career on it. I guess we'll start by trying one of these doors, but not before I introduce the map itself, which is... Blah! Not GM Blah or RP Blah, just Blah. And from what I understand, this one is an abstract piece made by none other than Nipper, who you might actually recognize as the creator of a number of classic maps. Well, when in doubt, choose the most obvious door, which is why we need to throw the map a curveball and go through this one. I wasn't moving through that last part, it was just kind of jaggedly pushing me forward. That was weird. That's something that was experienced probably completely differently in VR than it would be in pancake mode, but it still somehow weirdly works for what I think this map is going for. The Space Diner. Oh, this is so cool. Look. Look at this neon lighting and grid patterns on the floor with dark backgrounds. This is actually a pretty close approximation to what the 90s and early 2000s kind of portrayed VR to look like in the future. Well, let's get in here and see what the space diner is all about. Uh, can we open these doors? No, but... Well, we can just walk through them. Now, if this is a nipper map, it's probably quite old, but... It's still really interesting to experience these things in VR, knowing that they're not meant to be experienced this way, but they're a different impression nonetheless. What's funny is that if this bar were full of people, this would pretty much be what I imagine the internet would be like in 20 years. You'd slap on your virtual reality headset, head into a virtual bar, and from there, the conversations you have, from business to casual, would all be like a chat room, only physically represented. Of course, even before that, we got VR chat, and it is... Well, it's much less mainstream and much more ridiculous than I ever would have thought. Ooh. What, what, what was that? Is there something flying around through here? Oh, it's like a weird dream version of a dance floor. One that's concave in the ground. Ooh, but there's like something up here as well. Ooh, and we can climb it! Into the polar bear cave at SeaWorld, apparently. And if we're not careful, we'll end up sliding down that hole in the middle. Which we actually may... You hear that? Something's making noise over here. Let's drop down and whoa! There was that thing again. What is that? This doesn't even feel like the Source Engine. This feels like whatever engine Quake was on. Something like that. This meaty hole in the wall is just dispensing gore and skulls. They all are. You know what's disturbing about this is that it looks like the 90s horror mod version of the Burger King that's near me. Or at least what that Burger King used to look like. These jagged upside down stairs almost look like a bear trap or something. I'm almost afraid to approach this door and see what it does. What are you? 
This took a turn very quickly. This honestly looks like when people would just cobble weird stuff together in Doom mods. Uh... It's, I assume I'm gonna die if I touch that floor, so I'm just gonna scooch past you. Demonic Bean? I've still yet to get a good look at what that sprite that's flying around is. Alright, let's just keep moving and not... I don't know why that's so disconcerting to me. It's literally just a JPEG of a brain. But it just looks like <laughs> sickness. Nipper Cherry Clan. Well, I know some maps by Nipper. I'm not familiar with the other. Oh, hello, Fluffer. Is that dog missing an eye? Oh, look at all this artwork on the walls, including one of one of the doors in the void. If we turn around, there's that brain again. What is that thing? And what is that door on the ceiling? Ah, oh, so many questions. You know, it's almost a tradition at this point to have, like, an art gallery on these old maps. It's kind of weird. Like, so many of them have this. Ah, uh, Ash Williams. And... Hi. I don't like the way you were looking over your shoulder directly at me when I rounded that corner. Uh, but here's another old tradition, is to have a screenshot of the map in progress in the map itself. That looks like a real-time camera of somewhere that's on the map right now. Maybe we can find it? Can we climb this? We can. All right, uh, duck, 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 duck. Come on. There we are, look at this. You know, I've actually recently realized that I have a new phobia that's specifically tied to old games where this happens. And that's having a sky texture on what is very clearly a solid surface that's right there. So creepy. In a Truman Show kind of way. Do not duck or jump in moving vehicle. Oh, this is a tank. Ooh. That sounded like it did something behind us. Can we fire it again? Oof. Okay, we're gonna stop that for now. Just one thing to the next. This is almost reminding me of, like, an even more abstract growing map. More connective tissue. Do these doors... Like, if we see a door, like a normal door like this... Does that mean that it leads onto the white hallway? Immediate answer. No, no, it does not. I couldn't tell you what this is that it's led on to. Notice this doorway is not a doorway. And this pipe is not a pipe. What's your point? Oh, it really isn't a doorway. I see. Carry on. Okay. What happens if we try to grab the Forbidden Jolly Rancher? Oop. Nothing? Ooh, it does actually move a little bit. There's some degree of physics to it? Oop. But then again, I can jump right through it. Oh, look, these textures... Oh, well, from a distance, they almost look a little bit 3D. That's a weird illusion, but when you get close, you see they are actually completely flat. 
Oh, that's a little bit weird. When you stare at them for a second, you may even get the impression that they're moving, writhing a little bit. But I really kind of doubt that's the case. Through here, into the... Weirdly vascular walls. That's actually bothering me a little bit. Feels like I'm stepping on somebody's veins. Like, every bit of pressure I apply with my feet stops blood flow to something. Huh. That's weird. It's raining in this area in particular. Some of these squares with the crosses on them... Chunks that are, like, throwing up an error where they can't display the material that's actually supposed to be there. It's like, it's evocative not just of those early 90s 3D games, but of, like, early versions of those games, like leaked betas and stuff. At least it seems like it's taking partial inspiration from such things. Those aren't doors. But this potentially is. Ooh, are we gonna get a weapon pickup? Nope! Nope, instead we are deceased. It is a trap. We have respawned in yet another neon grid. Kind of feels like Tron. And if we were to try and jump down, we cannot. Oh, that single red star that appears smaller and closer than the other things. Makes me want to touch it, but it doesn't look like we can. There are, however, some rectangles in the wall that indicate doors. And some very weirdly displaced terrain. <laughs> There's that friggin' thing again. And it seems like we've discovered the magic railroad. Why is that so weird? There's an image I hadn't thought of before. Lights poking out of foliage. This feels like the kind of dreams I might have as a kid. Wandering some weird maze that... On its face, appears friendly. Well, up until that moment. But it's just got such a foreboding air about it. All up until we come upon the witch's house at the end. That looks like the same texture as the veiny hallway. Is this maybe the other turn we could have made? No. What keeps happening? That door actually slides open. It doesn't just allow me to phase through. I cannot, cannot say I'm not curious about this. However... Certain things have me even more curious. And I do have the credentials. <laughs> uh, I wish I could say this was the first time I've been put in a zoo. Come on, there's got to be a way out of here. Uh, it only flashes for a second. Maybe it does that on purpose, because I'm seeing it happen and I'm not flying out. I'm thinking it does that on purpose to make you think that you can get out, but it's just so the others can laugh at you. Let me guess. Let me guess. The other side of this wall is transparent? Hmm? Oh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> oh, I love this map. It's got all the weirdness of Gary's mod, but also the sense of humor. I guess they're one and the same. Hi. 
Oh, I finally got a good look at you. You're... And you're like a demented creepypasta image of a Half-Life 1 security guard. Huh, and these are all the different ways we can bother the idiots. Bother being a very loose word here. Uh, fortunately this one doesn't seem to be doing anything. Nor this. But I guess we get the idea. Hi. So, we're inside a CPU now, are we? And this one leads right back here. Oh, I wonder if all of these are actually permeable. Well, not this one. This one is, though. Will this lead us back to the witch's house, or no? Just a flame anomaly. Hee <laughs> hee. What are you? Although, I don't know which property this is in reference to. Although, I don't quite know which Disney property this would be in reference to. Probably one of those really racist ones that they don't put on Disney Plus and they're hoping you'll forget about. How do we get up on there? I... See, the part of my brain that considers this all a children's play area really wants to walk through that and come out the other end. But this is exactly what I was hoping to get from this, because it's sort of... It's not really horror, but it's sort of creepy to me. Just vaguely, in the same way that weird movies can be. In that it's the kind of thing that you look around at it, and you can't even feel any, like, connection to whoever made it. You have no idea what it's for, and you can't even really imagine it being made by a human mind. It's sort of the same feeling I get from LSD Dream Emulator. But it doesn't look like there's more we can do here, not on our own. Anyway, hey, we found where that door comes from. This is actually really useful as a hub. Maybe we can use this as just a means of connecting all of this, of figuring out how everything works into each other. Are you a door? You are not. Let's try going back some of the ways we've already been. I feel like in doing that, we can kind of gain a familiarity with the setting. Plus, there's a couple of things we've yet to see. For example, if we jump down here... What happens if we come through this? Oh, this is what's at the bottom of the pit in the witch's house. A rather mysterious sideways hallway in the witch's house. And we can actually climb up it. And this leads back onto here. Okay, I'm starting to get a mental image. It's a mental image that might get me institutionalized if I were to tell anyone about it, but I'm developing it. That actually... Uh, stop it with the jump scare head. It wasn't the only thing that I wanted to see in the witch's house. Which apparently bears the name of the map itself. Uh, we could climb up or down. Let's go down first. I couldn't even muster a jump scare sound. That killed me. I think my heart didn't beat for a few seconds. Stop it. Jeez, I'm just kind of advancing forward in a numb state. That's enough out of you. This really is a demented Disney World ride. It's like one of those things churches do instead of Halloween. Oh, now this. This is where I want to be. This is the kind of thing that reminds me of that one uh, virtual reality episode of Fairly Odd Parents. I always loved that one. I couldn't wait to play that. And I'm so stoked that, like, the actual VR that we got is so much cooler than that. Now, can we pass through these things? We can. 
And this leads back onto the space bar. What about the other direction? This again. You know, this whole map would actually be pretty great for laser tag. It all almost feels built for it. I always talk about how I like to think about the intended, like, in-game use of maps. Don't think this one has an intended use. I think it's probably just abstract and nothing more. Well, it is now. Alright, let's try climbing the witch's house, because that's the place that's kind of caught my interest the most. Up we go. Actually, not a bad view. Pretty cozy spot, a mansion amongst the cliff amongst the stars. And your own hedge maze. Anyway, let's get inside. Let's see what's in store. A door. Ah, oh, you are so weird. <laughs> well, since it's just depositing us back out here, I think there was another turn we could take inside the hedge tunnel. <laughs> see, this is so pretty, but so foreboding. It's the kind of thing that were I a child dreaming about this place, I would definitely have the impression that the chase is on, that there's something in here with me! Are, are there more than one of those things just traversing the map? Or am I just getting extremely lucky? Or, I guess, unlucky? Alright, so that's what this is. It's a laser grid. Uh, which isn't going to be very doable for me in VR. There's a... Well, I don't know what this is supposed to be. A rope, maybe? Uh, let's go down. Okay, so by all indications, it's completely safe to advance down this hallway, and I should just hold down the stick and not even worry about what's between me and whatever that is at the end. See? I told you it was perfectly safe. You guys should really listen to me more. I'm pretty smart. However, this does not seem to want to do anything. Alright, let's try this without VR. I'm just recording this a couple days later because I realized in editing, there's a very obvious seam around this part of the wall in the recording. But this still doesn't seem to do anything. Hmm. Well, there's something here. Ah, uh, I guess this is probably supposed to drop down and chase us, right? Well, I have no idea how to activate it. Okay, I guess something I did activated that. So I'm doing my noclip run, and it seems there's a little secret here. Right next to the taunt button. Everything on this map wants to shock me, both literally and figuratively. Where's it at? Come on. I know there's something here. Yeah, well, it makes a different sound and doesn't show the damage markers. But I think I'm just going to have to noclip this run. Yep. Oh, great. Another one of... 
Uh, have I found the oasis? Can this tree grant wishes? Can its branches impale me straight through the heart? Because that's what it felt like I just did. Oh, that's weird. When I turn the flashlight off, the entire map disappears in noclip view, only reappearing when I turn it back on. I've never seen that behavior before. Uh, but I think I've seen just about everything. What happens if we try to traverse you? This is the fun part of the fun house. Just comes right out the back. Which is not an unexpected outcome. It's just I didn't know what to expect. My hat is like a weird laser thing. I also forgot to see what happens if we fall down here. We land on the tank. Excellent. Woo! I just love how it shakes the map and you can hear stuff exploding all over. Now I'm also seeing, in my adventures in Noclip, something that I appear to have missed before. Hmm. This almost feels like some kind of dedication. I mean, besides just to, uh, the creator. Oop. But I wasn't quite able to figure out how to actually get here. This is not a door. And going through it just leads back here. Hmm. Actually, I was forgetting that there was another ladder down at the witch's house. So this is where they come from. It's doing that thing again where it just pushes me forward. Wow, this really is a demented Disney ride. And that's kind of what this feels like, doesn't it? Just a demented theme park ride where you move forward and you're just subjected to whatever nonsense the creator wants to subject you to. I think my mind is too analytical for this, because I keep trying to make sense of what it means or how it's intended to be taken. And I really do think this was just a pretty talented creator just screwing around in Hammer. And the result is funny or creepy or... Well, I guess that's the value of this map. I'm really curious to know what you guys get out of this. But it's time to move on to the next one. Welcome now to GM Minecraft Abandoned Cave. And this is weird to me, because it's just so weird to see something that looks like another familiar game, but you can just oddly feel that it isn't. Even though it's got roughly the same graphics, you can tell that the lighting is a lot more advanced, the sounds are different, and for some reason, taking those subtle details and putting them on familiar graphics is actually really disconcerting. It's almost like we come to know games as part of our reality, and we just intuitively understand when they're not behaving the way they usually do. Oh, like minecarts placed around like props? I wonder, can we actually push them? Oh, we can, but they're not on the tracks. They're just physics objects. So we can bring this over to the water and straight to the bottom. Not to mention the fact, though, that things do feel enough like Minecraft that I don't feel particularly safe down here. I mean, this is some very beautiful lighting that someone's done. 
a lot more complex than the torches that I would just stick on the walls, and, uh... Oh, hello. Maybe it's more complex, because from the look of it, someone has actually set up a little dwarf tunnel down here. You always knew it was a good mine when you actually take the time to build yourself a house down there, a little outpost, where you can live in luxury. Can we make our way up out of the abandoned tunnel with the clipped stairs? Uh, but one thing that hasn't changed, the art in Minecraft is always real creepy. Pixelated images that, for some reason, always evoked a weird sense of dread in me. I never placed any paintings because they all just feel so ominous. Like they're almost a warning to the person who placed them. It's at this moment that I'm realizing that the stone and ore textures do kind of... bring out a sort of anxiety in me. I think I'm so used to being on guard in tunnels... that even viewing the textures can trigger that response. And you know what else isn't helping? That vague bit of fog that's present as well. As well as what seems to be perhaps another base, not too far from the first. See, finding an abandoned base in a mine is such a weird thing. And you know what's even weirder? Seeing a dynamic flashlight being cast over Minecraft environments. It honestly feels like Minecraft is some distant childhood memory, which I was already almost out of high school when that was becoming a thing, and re-exploring it as an adult. That's what it feels like. It feels like I'm revisiting an old dream, only now with all my waking faculties to accompany me. Now, we've explored the, I say, player-made structures, but maybe we can descend deeper into the caves themselves? Maybe find ourselves some diamonds? Uh, for some reason, that is so creepy, seeing that overturned minecart submerged in water. But that's cobblestone. Now, I've been trained to fear cobblestone because it means that someone, some player, has deliberately sealed off this tunnel. Oh, the flashlight moving around really does make this so much worse. Yet, yeah, I've just completed a brief noclip run, and I don't think we're really going to find anything else. But believe it or not, I, this did actually freak me out a lot more than I thought it would. For several reasons. A, it's really weird seeing Minecraft in VR, especially in this kind of fidelity. B, with this extra, like, realistic lighting, which just my brain refuses to accept. And C, even independent of that, I am just so creeped out by the way this map is set up. I mean, look at this. Just a couple of lanterns and a wooden underground structure in a cave. And a cave that appears to have been quite built up and then abandoned after a tunnel was sealed. It actually makes me think about all the structures I've left behind in my own Minecraft worlds. You ever do that? You ever have in one of your worlds, like, kind of the old place? The place you don't go back to? Always super creepy returning to what was once your home, but this was never somebody's home, was it? This was, at best, an outpost. An outpost with, very conspicuously, no doors between your bed and danger. Look, this is the worst thing ever. Imagine trying to lay down here, eyes constantly on that window, knowing that that's the hallway out to the caves. Wondering if you'd see some dark shadow of an unknown monstrosity creeping through, coming to get you? I, 
I don't like staring at this window one bit, and I don't understand how anyone could sleep down here. We're moving to the next map now. And finally, welcome to GM Bricolage. At least I think that's how it's pronounced. And looking around, I think I see the inspiration for this. Uh, this is very clearly a case of what a child fears happens when you get sucked through the drain at the bottom of the ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, this is a weird one. Look at that. I don't know if you can even see that on your screen, but look at the way that moves with my view. Ah, oh, it's like walking through the barrel of a kaleidoscope. What happens if we walk through the end? <laughs> my god, it's full of stars. See, this is a brand of weirdness that I feel like is getting a lot more attention lately. Children's play areas in the 90s had a very specific style to them. Lots and lots of neon colors and weird patterns. All kinds of structures that took all these weird shapes, yet were nevertheless incredibly safe for what they were. Or at least gave off the impression that they were safe. I imagine that probably wasn't as much the case as we'd like to think. But now, these days, there's a lot more attention on just how weird these things really were. About imagining if our perception of these things as kids were actually accurate to how they really are. Or even taking that adult view of them and applying them to the child's experience. I guess the closest thing I can compare it to is imagine a kid who finds clowns fun or entertaining, but then as an adult with adult sensibilities grows to find them disturbing or creepy. Imagine that concept, but applied to the location and the general vibe of restaurant play areas. And that's kind of the treatment they've been getting lately, taking these bright, fun images but presenting them in a way that feels kind of threatening, which I suppose to a small child those places could be. I wonder if it's not those kids, the kids who never like these places, that are making these ideas popular again. You see it a lot in liminal space maps. I mean, places you've seen in your dreams. That map that I played a couple of times. That has a more directly dark and foreboding feel, but applies them to a lot of the same imagery and architecture. Is there anywhere down there we can access? Kind of weird to have a pool in one of these things as well. Seems like a massive liability. But then again, there's my adult sensibilities coming into what to a child would be like some kind of heaven on earth. If this is still earth. I really don't like the silence and the coloring of the floor and ceiling makes this feel honestly like I'm just walking amidst bubbles in a river of blood. These areas that you would crawl around in were always scary because they're so tight but it's not even claustrophobia as a kid you're small enough that you have plenty of room it's not knowing what's going to be around the corner you can hear other kids crawling around they really are just horror vents like half-life or something just that they're supposed to be fun i never particularly like them unless the ones had windows Oh, that was not nearly as deep as I thought it was going to be. But... 
It looks like you can fall through and land in this pool. Uh, I don't think this is safe unless, in this universe, water works on Minecraft logic. But even then, a kid would probably belly flop pretty hard into this. Yep. Uh. You know, I'm starting to get an even worse impression from this now. Not only do these feel like bigger and therefore less safe versions of these playthings, they also give the impression of you are lost in here forever. That you're being teleported about, which causes you to lose your sense of direction. You've got all these tunnels that go off every which way. Never mind the fact that we can apparently jump through the ceiling and see everything all at once. Actually, you know what? I mean, I, I was taking this from the whole point of view of adult sensibilities viewing childish things the way children see them. But let's go back to the child's point of view. And in order to do that, I'm going to tap into what is literally my first memory. And I only know that it really happened because it was later corroborated by my mom. Many years later, I thought I was crazy. Now, when I was about two, I distinctly remember being really high up and crying my eyes out knowing that I was in the mouth of a whale and having no idea how to get down. And it was only years later that my mom told me, oh yeah, no, that was at the aquarium in Brooklyn. They had this like big whale statue or whatever and you can climb up the back with a staircase. Now, that presents all kinds of weird insight into the way children think, and the way, like, they process consciousness. Because I didn't know how I had gotten up there, but I did know that I was in the mouth of a whale? That's so weird. And so, with that in mind, I imagine, like, a kid could climb into one of these things at McDonald's and feel like they're hopelessly lost, as I feel now. I wonder if this isn't maybe intentionally playing on that kind of anxiety. Or like, when you come to a section with a window and you look out and you can't find your mom anywhere. I am sticking these landings today, though. Give me credit where credit is due. I'll be honest. I don't know how much more I can commentate on this, so... I'll say something if I think of something, but for the most part, I'm just going to be running through. Have we been here before? Oh, the way it keeps changing scale like this is so disorienting. Now, this looks more like a waiting room. A place like a furniture store or something stashes all the kids while the parents discuss deals on the furniture. Getting a little bit tighter in here. Actually, forget furniture store. This reminds me of something that my old pediatrician's office had. Obviously, nothing quite to this scale, but... You know, to a three- or four-year-old, it sure feels like it. For some reason, kids just really love crawling around in little tiny buildings. And adults love crawling around in giant buildings, but we call that work. Oh, is this the high dive? Yep. Yeah. Huh. I guess the world really does run on Minecraft logic when it comes to water damage. You can only pick randomly. 
That took me nowhere of use. And back here. This one a couple of times, unless we fell down from it once, maybe. Yeah, I think we've been through here. Uh, let's begin our no-clip run. Been running around for quite a while. You know what? This is actually not nearly as complicated as I imagined. It's also weird, and there's, look, there's so many of these tunnels that have so many unnecessary twists and turns that I, I really thought I was way more lost than I was. Oh my god, I did it to myself. I spent this whole video talking about how kids view things as more complex than they really are, and so when they're in these tunnels, they feel like they might as well be lost in, like, the Paris catacombs. Meanwhile, I was doing it to myself with this map. Oh, this is a weird one. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say about it, but I feel like the things you can say are quite profound and may actually be quite exploitable in horror. So that was three weird maps, and while I'm not going to try and get specific about all three in this outro, what more can you ask from Gary's Mod? I think, if nothing else, this is proof that Gary's Mod is, as I've said before, the best buy on Steam. Because where else can you get such a variety of experiences for free? I mean, beyond the $10 cost of Gary's Mod if you get it off sale. I mean, in the only hour and a half that I've been playing or whatever, I've experienced so much nostalgia and creepiness and weirdness, and yet also such a weird amount of insight. Not just in the commentary that I've come up with trying to associate these things with horror, even though they're not really horror maps, but also in just thinking about why I like the things I like. And I hope that comes across in this commentary, that when you approach these weird things from an analytical perspective, thinking about what the creator's intended experience might have been, or why they did things a certain way, even if there's no logic to be gained from it, you can gain some insight about yourself, like your likes and dislikes, how some of these things might be applied, or some things you might want to look into further, or even just stuff to experiment with. I mean, maybe some of these maps were even the result of that. But if you like this video, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for more creepy and comfy content. If you have any ideas for other videos you think I should do, the best place to suggest that will be at the Discord, which I will link in the description. If you want to try any of these maps for yourself, those links will also be in the description. My voice is completely worn out by now, you can probably hear, so... As always, I will see you in the next one.